made possible through support from ARC Thrift Stores, Atlantis Community Inc., CCDC, Colorado Cross Disability Coalition, Developmental Pathways, the Ark of Aurora, and Rocky Mountain ADA Center. A Think Change Training. Hi there, I'm Petrie. And I'm Jeff. We are advocates with the Ark of Aurora, and we are here today to uh, provide a Think Change Training for you. The subject today is going to be ADA as it pertains to adult services and settings. So one of the first things maybe we want to talk about um, kind of off the top is Medicaid managed settings and the ADA and kind of what that looks like. So just kind of as a um, reminder, or in case you're unaware, the ADA stands for American with Disabilities Act, came out in 1990, um, and it allows access to physical settings and reasonable accommodations within those settings. So when we're kind of talking about Medicaid managed uh, environments, those could be things like nursing homes, um, assisted living, um, perhaps day programs, those are very separate, and I want to make this clear, those are very separate than things like PCAs um, or host home providers. Host home providers and PCAs don't necessarily have to have any licensing. In fact, they don't have licensing. So they're a little more gray in that area as to what they do or don't have to follow. However, anyone that is um, licensed, such as the other things I mentioned, do have to provide those ADA accommodations. So some of those things might look like um, being able to access public spaces in a wheelchair, um, so having aisles clear, trip-free zones, things of that nature, perhaps grab bars um, in hallways or bathrooms. Um, here's something interesting that a lot of people don't necessarily think about for people who are visually impaired. Um, any signs that throw off glare, if they do have any kind of vision, they're unable to read them. So signs that... Oh, um, yeah, really? I yeah, didn't... yeah. So signs that um, don't throw off a glare. Um, typeface that's easy to read and bold. Mm -hmm. um, placement of signs so that people can really see them. You know, all of these kinds of things um, are examples of what might be in, you know, one of those adult settings. Right on. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I know there's a lot to talk about, too, about ADA and employment. Do you want to... Yeah. I'd love to that? share a little bit on Great. that. Great. Okay. So, ADA um, does affect the employment realm. Um, and employers that have 15 or more employees have more restrictions regarding ADA. And basically, all ADA is really there for in the employment world is to prohibit discrimination based on any kind of physical or mental disability. Um, and as they say, people with disabilities are entitled to have reasonable accommodations at work. But let's define reasonable accommodations. A uh, reasonable accommodation is any kind of accommodation that can help them perform the essential functions of the job. The employer does not have to make reasonable accommodations if it can cause what they say is an undue burden. And let me explain what an undue burden is, because this is a lot of yep. verbiage here. And Examples would be great. Yeah. So an undue burden would be anything that requires a significant um, difficulty to do or expense to the employer. Um, and if something is considered an undue burden, the employer is not required to lower their production, productivity, or quality of work in order to accommodate someone with disabilities. So basically, what they're saying is, you know, people with disabilities have the right to the accommodations they need to perform the job the way it needs to be performed, but an employer doesn't have to change their standard of what they expect out of their employee just because someone has a disability. They need to level the playing field with the accommodation that gives them a fair opportunity to do the job. So is it discretionary on the part of the employer, or are there guidelines as to what There are guidelines involved? that you could look deeper into, okay. but on the basic you know that you, you're going to have a situation that you might need to dig a little deeper into if they're not willing to give you the accommodation you're asking for. Okay. And then there's a way to kind of determine if it's reasonable or not. Okay. And there's always supports and services out there um, in case you feel that the employer is 
is not providing a reasonable accommodation that you can go to, perhaps and maybe starting with one of your local art chapters. Yes, yeah, definitely. And I was also going to say, too, if you are in the employment world and you have a job coach and you feel like you know, you're know you not getting your accommodations met, you need to sit down with that job coach and go over what, what you would like to get to make the job easier. And okay. if, if you have trouble asking for those accommodations and you do have a job coach, it would be something that they could support you with. And I encourage you to do that. Yeah, that's a really good point. Okay, well, I think that we have hit on, you know, kind of some of the high level as it pertains to ADA today in the adult services and um, settings. So stay tuned, please, for more Think Change trainings. They will be coming at you. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Think Change. Talks, trainings, and tools to help in your work for or with people with intellectual and other developmental disabilities. Learn more at www.thinkchange.training.